Hello everyone, my name is Julia Fudo. In today's Speaker Bureau speech, I'm going to talk to you about something very near and dear to me that I've committed almost 11 years of my life to. I recognize I have two different audiences, one being my different brain screw and the other being my speech topic, so let me bridge the gap here. For the different brains people, you know me as a neurodiverse self-advocate with the passion for making a difference in other people's lives. But what you might not know about me is, I'm an avid martial artist who has been training in the art of Aikido since I was 10 years old, and I will be nearing 11 years of training in it this month. For my Aikido people, you've known me as an Aikidoga with such a deep love and appreciation for Aikido. But most of you probably didn't know I'm not neurotypical because having disabilities wasn't something I really talked about. However, Aikido has played a significant role in my life, especially with shaping me into the person I am today. To celebrate my 11th year anniversary, I'd like to pay a special tribute to Aikido and Florida Aikikai, my home dojo, for how it's helped me cope with the challenges I've faced as being neurodiverse as well as talk about why other people with different brains should consider giving Aikido a try. So let's get right into it, starting with what the day in the life of me at Aikido in the summer of 2018 looked like. So just a normal day in the summer of 2018, I was talking to a friend I just made when a man beckoned me over to him. I approached him and next thing I knew, I was swung around with much momentum. Suddenly, I was in a headlock position, thrown by my neck into a flip, and was slammed down into the floor with loud ba-bam. After being thrown by the man, I got up again with just as much enthusiasm as I had approaching him, and with a big smile on my face. This man is one of my Aikido instructors, and I am an Aikido student. Perplexed by what he just saw, my new friend asked me how I could have so much passion for Aikido. My answer? How couldn't I? Aikido is life for me. So, what is Aikido? Aikido can be translated as I, harmony, Ki, energy, and Do, the way, or the way of harmonizing energy. It is a type of Japanese martial art invented in the 1920s by Morihei Ueshiba, commonly called O-sensei or master teacher. It is similar to Judo and Jiu-Jitsu, but as the name would suggest, the defender harmonizes with the attacker and uses their energy against them. The goal is not to hurt the attacker, but rather to work with their energy and redirect it in a non combative form. People almost always work with one or more partner. To give you a better idea of what Aikido actually looks like, I would like to show you video clips of myself from 2018 doing Aikido in what's called a circle of love. Circles of love are typically done when people are about to move or when it's someone's birthday. In my case, it was my early 19th birthday celebration. In it, the entire class forms a circle. You go around and attack everyone, and then they attack you back. Before I show you the video, though, I would like to caution those without any formal Aikido training to please not try any of this at home, as attempting any of these moves incorrectly can cause injury. This is what Aikido looks like. Believe it or not, it really is a circle of love. That video was taken about two and a half or three years ago. Now, I'd like to tell you about how I got there, starting with what I was like before everything happened. So, a little bit about me then. I was born blue. Seven months before I first set foot in Aikido, I spent the entire prior summer doing physical and occupational therapy 
five days a week to try and integrate my primitive reflexes. Primitive reflexes are automatic movement patterns and natural reactions which start developmental processes by releasing neural functions. Normally, these reflexes integrate within the first year of a baby's life, but mine didn't. This, combined with my other neurodiversities, impacted me in the following ways. I always felt like I was falling. I had poor balance, was easily disoriented, and had trouble reestablishing my balance as a result of vestibular dysfunction. My eyes couldn't track smoothly, and I don't have binocular vision, so I had really bad timing and poor depth perception. No depth perception. I had difficulties crossing the midline, meaning both sides of my brain didn't work together, which you need for body awareness, since reintegration, and other higher level developmentally important skills. For example, if my left arm crossed over to my midline, the center of my body, and then to the right side, my brain would get very confused. Left brain confusion meant I didn't have dominant hand to right with or dominant foot I felt more comfortable using. I had poor hand-eye coordination and low muscle tone. I always was in startle mode, fight or flight response. Because I had trouble with just standing up, other developmental processes were hindered, including learning. I was shy and socially awkward. I wanted to socialize with others, but I lacked proper social skills. I was bullied by others including being physically attacked by a boy twice in the third grade. I had frequent accidents and injuries because I lacked spatial awareness. I had a lot of difficulties performing everyday tasks. I needed help putting on clothes because I couldn't stand on one foot without falling over. It took me a long time to learn something new, especially things that involve motor planning. I experienced a lot of difficulties following multi-step directions. I wasn't a bad kid, but I was overwhelmed by all the information. Also, I couldn't follow along with people both socially and literally. Here's how I was introduced to Aikido. When I was in fourth grade, my elementary school passed out pamphlets about a spring break camp at this dojo and my mom got a copy of it. My mom called to see if it would be a good fit for me. The woman running the spring break program was very understanding and compassionate, so my mom signed me up for spring camp. If I didn't like it, I'd only be there for five days, and I might be able to learn a few things to defend myself if I ever needed to. So, March 29th, 2010. This was the start of spring camp and the day I first set foot in the stojo. On my first day of camp, the staff made me feel welcome, but I was shy and just stayed in the corner all slumped over until a nice boy that was my age approached me. His name was Tommy. Tommy included me in things. He was frequently my Aikido partner, and he spent time with me getting to know me. This was something I wasn't used to, as most kids judged me for being different and generally stayed away from me. Tommy was my first friend Aikido. I had a lot of fun during spring break camp, and I wanted to come back to Aikido. This was one of the best decisions of my life, and little did I know that one week of spring camp would turn it into it nearing my 11th year anniversary of training at Aikido. For the first two years of my Aikido journey, I only attended my dojo's winter and summer camp programs for kids. During these two years, everyone was very kind to me, I started learning how to defend myself using Aikido techniques. I learned how to roll and do certain Aikido movements. I developed good socialization skills because all kids, ranging from 5 to 15 years old, needed to partner up with each other. A big part of Aikido camp was also playing games with the other kids, so I was taken outside of my comfort zone in a good way as I was encouraged by them and the staff to participate in these activities but was never made fun of if I had difficulties. Dodgeball. This was the only thing I didn't exactly love because the physical aspects of my neurodiversities made it just as hard for me to throw the ball as it was for me to dodge it. However, dodgeball was such a big part of camp and the other kids were so perplexed as to why I didn't like it 
that it became a frequent game to try to get me on the mat to play it, which I thought was hilarious. Aikido camp let me take care of myself. Another part of my neurodiversities is I tire out very easily because everything takes far more energy for me to do than it would the regular person. The dojo had a nice couch and the camp staff, the camp staff let me nap to recharge. At camp, I began to develop confidence and self-esteem outside of my home. I was always comfortable at home, but not outside of it and not without the help of a family member. Along with Tommy, I started making other friends. I blossomed and was happy because the people I met in Aikido were among the first people to make me feel loved, appreciated, and accept me for who I am. To this day, I credit my Aikido camp experiences for helping me to have happy, healthy, long-lasting relationships with others. So after 15, Kids are no longer considered campers. When I was 15, I still wanted to be a part of Aikido's winter and summer camp program. During the summer of my 16th birthday, camp gave, gave me the videographer and junior counselor roles. I started taking pictures and videos daily and uploading them to social media so parents could see what their kids did all day. As a junior counselor, I helped with cleaning and running activities when needed and took on a more active role of teaching kids Aikido, as well as preparing some of the kids for big belt promotion tests, including for the adult ranks. At the end of the summer, I made a summer camp video. I've been a junior counselor and videographer every summer since I was 15. I look forward to it every year because it makes me feel happy that, despite my age, I can still remain a part of these camp programs and because I can now give back to others. I've seen a lot of young campers grow over the years and could be a Tommy for several of them. I loved Aikido camp and I wanted more. I didn't like waiting for the seasons to change to be back. So at the end of the summer camp of 2012, I convinced my mom to let me take year round classes. Camp helped me to improve on a social level and developmentally, but it wasn't until I started taking year round classes with camp that I started to improve physically. I was enrolled in kids' classes for the next two years. Before doing techniques, classes always started with a strength training warm-up. Doing these exercise routines helped me become physically stronger. Practicing Aikido involves a lot of repetition. Practicing the same movements over and over again all year long helps to rewire my brain. The movements in Aikido range from large and involving one's entire body a very subtle and just specific part of their body. A huge part of my predominant condition, developmental coordination disorder, is the lacking of gross and fine motor skills. So all the Aikido practice was kind of like physical and occupational therapy for me. Using different parts of my body at the same time and crossing the midline really helped improve my coordination as well. Aikido focuses on helping people ground themselves physically as well as spiritually. The more physically grounded one is when defending themselves, the better the delivery of techniques. When throwing people, if not physically grounded, you lose your balance and go flying with your partner. In order to not lose my balance and go flying with my partner, I need to learn how to ground myself. It took a lot of time for me to learn how to center myself with perseverance and the patience of my teachers, I finally learned how to do it. Learning to be physically grounded has also improved my balance off the Aikido mats. Another huge aspect of Aikido is meditation. As kids, we were taught to stay calm even when an attacker comes with much forced intensity. We learn to stay calm by paying attention to our breath and to go with the flow of attack. At times, We've even paused class just to take a minute or so to do some deep breathing. The meditation and being ground aspect helped to calm down my overactive nervous system. I went from being in a constant fight or flight mode to learning how to take control of this. And now, knowing I can effectively defend myself against an attacker, I walk around with a peace of mind and I'm not afraid of others. In my dojo, if you start out as a kid, you get promoted with stripes and different colored belts. However, some kids advance into the adults program 
and then test for different adult white belt ranks. I was getting close to needing a test for my adult white belt, and with that, my Aikido needed some more tweaking. Over the years in camp, I had taken a few adult classes here and there, starting when I was 11 years old, but I never took them consistently until I was about 13 or 14. The kids' program focused more on the big picture, whereas adult classes focused more on the fine details. So to improve my Aikido and to get ready for these next big rank promotions, I started taking adult classes regularly. Training with adults helped both my Aikido and other aspects of myself by a lot. I was used to training with bodies smaller than mine, but now being the smallest and one of the youngest bodies, I got a more realistic feeling of what I'd have to do in order to defend myself from an attacker. I realized there was still much more I needed to learn how to do better, such as openings, having my body be in the right positions at all times, side attacks, falling along with the defender if I was the attacker, falling and landing properly, not exposing myself to where I could get hurt, and the endings of techniques, just to name a few things. It was almost like I was a new student all over again. Thankfully, the adults were all very patient with me, kind to me, and appreciated my enthusiasm for Aikido. Like training in the different Aikido programs, the areas of myself that were affected by my neurodiversities went from being improved on a big picture level to being improved with much more detail. After a few years, my Aikido techniques improved significantly. I was being told by several of my teachers that I was really good at Aikido. It started to become a joke that I was being turned into a monster. I'm no longer the newest or lowest ranked adult student, and I'm now helping teach new adults how to do Aikido. So I was scheduled to take my last white belt rank test in February of 2020, but I didn't feel ready. So I asked to wait to take it until May or August of that year. But like everything else, Aikido shut down temporarily in March due to the coronavirus. It opened back up on June 15th, and I was back on day one. Not being able to take Aikido classes from March through June was very, very hard for me. And it's wonderful to be back. The structure of Aikido classes changed to incorporate coronavirus safety measures. Classes went from being predominantly hands-on to predominantly weapon-based and almost no hand contact until recent. As we are now moving towards having mostly hybridized classes, that gives students the option to either only train with weapons or to do the hands-on techniques depending on where the comfort level with the coronavirus situation currently is. Using weapons only was a big change and challenging for me. I am learning how to do a different kind of Aikido while I watch our instructor and concentrate on staying in my square, which is a lot for me to think about all in one time. It is hard for me to follow along with my instructor. I went from teaching lower ranked people hands on Aikido to now being taught weapons by people lower ranked than me, which humbles me. I am waiting for my vaccine before I do hands on work again. However, I'm happy to be working on weapons because it is helping me use different areas of my brain, and coincidentally, I need to have a good grip on them to pass my next test when the day comes. And that's one of the reasons actually I want to postpone taking my test. I also look forward to doing many of the things I used to be able to do that I once took for granted, such as being able to go to Aikido more frequently, the hands-on training, seeing all the people I haven't seen since before the coronavirus struck, attending in-person seminars, and being able to attend camp as well as make another summer camp video. Aikido helped me not only learn how to defend myself, but how to face the stressors of everyday life and it influences how I react to things. To ground myself, I do yoga meditation, which I learned at Aikido. Instead of trying to fight everything, I've learned to go with the flow. Pre-pandemic days, if I saw a shy person somewhere, whether it be school, work, Aikido, or somewhere else, I went out of my way to make them feel comfortable, like Tommy did for me when I started Aikido. Instead of getting small when a challenge strikes me, I tackle it with much passion and intensity and give everything my all. 
Instead of being sad when a bad thing happens or when things don't go as planned, I use the Aikido mindset of staying positive and always find light even in the darkest of situations. I practice the gratitude Aikido, Aikido gave and taught me. So why should people with different brains consider giving Aikido a try? Unfortunately, the neurodiverse population is a vulnerable population. Many of them are or have been bullied like myself. Aikido teaches people self-defense. People don't go through ranks quickly, so it helps to teach them patience and perseverance. If physically impacted like myself, it helps significantly to improve total body strength. Aikido can really improve one's confidence and self-esteem, especially that of a neurodiverse person. People there are taught leadership skills and social skills. Aikido helps focus one's energy and mind. People here learn how to take control of their energy, meditate, and develop a really good mindset for life. For those who rely on a lot of repetition to learn, Aikido provides that in just about everything. Discipline is taught in a kind manner. It can be a lot of fun, too. The people one meets at Aikido often become lifelong friends. And the Aikido community is a wonderful community to be a part of. Everyone is seen as family and is treated as such. After observing me being thrown into a flip by my neck, my new friend asked me how I could have so much passion for Aikido. Here's why I do. Physically, I think doing Aikido is a lot of fun, especially when I'm ha halfway across the mat by someone m twice my size. I get a major sense of accomplishment in knowing that I'm improving my techniques and in knowing I can help others improve theirs. I can interact with a lot of people. Although I have chronic conditions, many of which are physical, Aikido has acted as a treatment for them. It has helped me to not stick out in a bad way nearly as much as I used to. Aikido has turned me into a strong, confident individual that enjoys life. The people at Aikido helped me become the person I am today by believing in me and showing me that they care. Words cannot express how grateful I am for everyone there that has helped make a positive impact on me, which was everyone. Home is where the heart is, and Florida Aikido has my home away from home. I truly feel like I belong at my dojo. To me, Aikido is much more than just a type of Japanese martial art. It's a way of life, and it's provided me with much solace through many of the hardships I faced in life. I sincerely don't know what I'd do without it. That concludes today's talk. I'd like to thank Haki, Anita, and Joseph from Different Brains for working with me and for helping me to share my voice. I'd also like to thank the following people for their help and kindness to me over the past 11 years. Peter and Penny Bernas, Helen, Keith, Janet, Victor, Marissa, Darius, Mike Patino, Andrew, Jerry, Lynn, and Tommy. I could not have done any of this if it weren't for all of you and for countless others. As we say in camp, eat well, sleep well, sayonara. We'll see you next time. Take care.